Amen. Well, give the Lord a great big hand clap. Hallelujah. And we'd like to welcome everyone all over the internet as you join us today at New Day Christian Center, a truly upper room, Holy Ghost filled, Holy Ghost controlled church where Jesus is Lord. And the people of God said, Amen. Amen. Well, if you have your Bibles, and I know this church does because we are a word church. Open your Bibles with me to Matthew chapter 24. And as I said before, uh, God instructed me to do a lot more preaching to the lost, to the backslidden, and to get the church ready. Amen? Amen. So along that line is all the teachings. You know, and I find myself knowing that God is so close to calling His home, sending our Redeemer Jesus to call His bride uh, home, I've, there's like a thousand things every week I'm wanting to preach to people, and I only have one service a week, and I'm really thinking, dear God, I might have church every night from now on. Uh, you know, that's what pastor, some of these pastors do. They have revival centers, and they have church every single day of the week. That's what Pastor Grant does. He has church every single day of the week, and flies in every every week to make sure he's there on Sunday mornings. Then he preaches revivals all over the world at, between Sundays. But he's got church open every single night. And I'm thinking, man, Lord Jesus, I might want to start opening up the church every night just to get the word, the word, the word, the word, the word out there as much. Reach that last person, amen? That's the only thing that burns in my heart is one more soul. Amen. But we're going to look today, all the teachings, what I was going to say is all the teachings are going to somehow be connected or touch our, our mentality, our attitudes, our, our call, our work, our labor, everything that we should be doing and about in this last hour. Amen. So if you have your Bibles, open up to Matthew chapter 24, and we're going to look first. Uh, well, let's start about... Let's look at verse 40. Now, let's look at 38. We'll just go ahead and, and uh, recap a little bit of what we may be just living in Matthew 24 and these other scriptures until the trumpet sounds. Amen. Amen. Is that okay with you? Amen. Say, I'm a, I'm a servant and I'm called to ministry. So if it doesn't apply to me, I'll pray for the right person to hear it. Amen. Uh, we were raised in my, my original church that if pastor's teaching something that doesn't necessarily come into your living room, it's meant to come into somebody's living room. So you sit there and pray in the Holy Ghost softly, believing that that word will go forth and won't return void and has an impact on the person in church or on the Internet that it's meant for. Amen? You don't just sit there and say, well, I, I, you, don't, you never waste an hour when you're part of the body. Amen? Amen? So if this doesn't directly alarm you or stir you, there's somebody out there and it needs to be stirred, that needs to become awakened to this. Amen? And then that means that it's your ministry now to intercede and make sure that demons are torn down so that person that doesn't get the revelation of this can have the revelation of this. Amen. Hallelujah. So let's look at verse 38. For as in the days of were before the flood, they were eating drinking, marrying, given in marriage until that day that Noah entered the ark. Amen. Now, Jesus is telling us this as a specific uh, pattern of what life is going to be just before he comes back. It's going to be just like the days of Noah. Absolute global destructions on the horizon, but they're going through life absolutely unaware, oblivious, or let's put it this way, life as normal. Amen. And you even tell, try to tell people about weather pattern changes, and the first thing out of their mouth is, oh, this is Texas, it's always like that. I mean, absolutely, remember we just taught purpose on, uh, stupid on purpose, willfully ignorant. They choose not to open their eyes and say, yeah, this isn't like how I was raised. And I've lived in Texas 35 plus years and I haven't seen this. And uh, that's the attitude of this generation of Noah or the generation just before Jesus comes back. Life as usual. I, I got plans. 
I want to get married, I want to retire, I wanted this, and just choosing to be oblivious to all the signs and all the righteous preaching, which we need, we need more timely preaching. Now listen to me. I love every single man and woman behind a pulpit. That doesn't mean I necessarily think that they're in tune with God right now. Everybody wants to just beat people to death. I don't want to beat nobody to death. I love Kenneth Copeland. I love Jimmy Swagger. I love Jerry Seville. I, I love these guys. I, some of them I'm not real fond of. I, I think they're preaching heresy. I think Andy Stanley needs to repent. Uh, that, that man is demonically energized, and I will not apologize for that. Uh, he's going to the dark side fast. There's other ministers, but do I, I want to see him lose everything, die, and go to hell? No, I want, him, I want his eyes to be opened up that he's got an influence that he doesn't need to be taken out unless he becomes reprobate. He needs to repent. Amen? So do I approve of everything? No, but does that mean I, I want to pick a fight and destroy ministers? Absolutely not. Are you listening to me? So I, it's not, I'm never going to preach something to hurt another ministry. I don't, that's not what I'm called to. I'm called to help. Amen? So if I say something that sounds like I'm challenging another ministry, it's only that they might understand, repent, and get in step with the Holy Spirit as I perceive it to a generation that's about to see global destruction. Now, did that help any? I believe that if my house is on fire, it's not time to buy new furniture. I'm not trying to be funny. If my house is on fire, it's not time to plan my next vacation. If, I'm, if my house is on fire, I'm not sitting, balancing all the financial stuff for my retirement and my 501c3 and my 401k and my, my CDs and IRAs and all this other stuff. It's time to get ready to get out as quickly as possible. The world is on fire spiritually and even now naturally. Can I hear an amen? amen. So it's time to do what? Get ready to get out of here as quick as possible. It doesn't mean that what I was raised on, prosperity, authority, dominion, intercessory prayer, all these absolute wonderful kingdom truths I was taught by Kenneth Copeland. I'm not throwing that out just because the dispensation is shifted. But it is a time to focus on a different thing. Now, does that help you? Because I'm not, I'm not bipolar. Well, one day you like him, and one day... I'm not attacking anybody. I'm just saying that the house is on fire, globally speaking. The people need to get ready to escape as quickly as possible. It's not the time to focus as much. Yeah, I'm going to need to eat even the day of his coming, unless you're called to fast. But I'm talking about natural elements. Amen. I'm going to need to have water even until the day of his coming. I'm going to need to take care of my house. I occupy till he comes. But the focus is shifted to his coming. Amen. That's all I'm trying to get across, church. I'm not, I, I haven't changed my roots. Uh, but my roots are growing further out into the realm of his day is coming other than let's sit here and prosper. Let's sit here and, and receive the goodness of God and the fullness of Abraham's covenant. The, the, we, I'm not going to say, okay, no more clothing and walk around naked till he comes. I'm not going to stop eating till he comes. But you don't become the generation where that's all they do is life as normal, still wanting to prosper, still wanting to have the best this and the best that. He's at the door. The world's on fire. People are dying. Our focus should be on, the, on his coming, at, in, being imminent at any moment and pulling somebody else out of the fire with us. Amen. 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 I didn't say quit your jobs, uh, denounce prosperity, walk around naked. God wants you humble, broke, stupid, and sick. I, I haven't changed any of that. But the emphasis is now on harvest of souls that are still in the darkness, even while I've lived the last 30, 40 years, blessed of the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's all I'm trying to say. So our emphasis, men and women of God, reach the lost at any cost. 
Go out and preach the gospel. But they've heard it. Preach it again. Preach it again. Preach it again. Don't keep focusing on one person, but preach it to the people, to the world, to your neighborhood, to your city, to your county, to your state, to your, to your nation. Preach it, preach it, preach it, preach it, preach it, and don't hold your peace, saith the Lord. Amen. That's the days of Noah. They were getting married, given in marriage, eating, drinking, starting careers, but he was preaching, preaching, preaching and preparing, preaching and preparing, preaching and building, preaching and building, preaching and warning, preaching and preparing, day after day after day, for how long? 120 years. Glory to God. His, if, yes, give Jesus praise, hallelujah. So it's not a time to grow weary. It's not a time to get distracted. It's a time to stay faithful, preach and work, and don't change your focus. He never stopped building, never stopped preaching, because it was all culminating to one thing. The preaching was going to cause those that would hear to escape, and judgment would come on everybody else. Amen. That's where the Spirit of the living God is right now, as far as I'm concerned. I'm not denying my roots. I'm not no, uh, distancing myself from my fathers. But if they don't change, i got to change anyway. Amen. If my, my forefathers don't say, uh, here's the ball, it's changing, run with it, boy, and, and we're going to focus on helping you, then I, I'm not going to stop building, stop preaching what I think he wants me to preach at all, just to stay in an atmosphere of looking like I'm friendly to what raised me. I'm going to be friendly as I go on further with a more focused attention on the now word for the world. Amen. Well, I hope that helps you. Because we're not, one, we're not here for division and we're not here for confusion. And I know if you don't hear my heart and understand the spirit of my heart, you'll say, well, one day he's this and one day he's that. No, I'm, I'm still everything, but the focus is this. So I don't have to cuss this and curse this and deny this and forsake what raised me, but I still have to go further. Amen. Glory to God. And that's all I'm trying to get across so that you, in your spirit, man, there's not this confusion that you can't receive. I am prosperity. I am authority and dominion. I am word of faith. And that brought me to this. And I don't have to leave that to get to, to take this further. I have to line upon line, precept upon precept to go further. But it was to go further, not just camp. Now we're the further generation. We're the Noah generation. We're the last hour generation. Can I hear an amen? amen. Does that help you? Amen. Glory to God. Say, I am. I am. Word of faith. Word of faith. I am righteousness I am prosperity but it was to bring me to this my purpose my final purpose the end time purpose for this end time generation amen thank you Lord thank you Lord amen so with that in mind look at this for the, before the flood say it's coming they were eating drinking marrying given in marriage until that day Noah entered the ark. What's entering the ark? Say rapture. The rapture of the church. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So they're going to act just the same, and they're going to cuss you and laugh at you as the crowds cussed and laughed at Noah, but he kept building, kept preaching, kept building, because the fulfillment of that building was to ride the call of God out of here. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So your ministry, your purpose, what you breathe for right now is different than your forefathers, but it's to propel you in faithfulness until you enter in the calling up of the church. Amen. And don't look for approval. Don't look for uh, acceptance. And don't look for the majority to agree with you. Because they're not. Most people... I'm going to say something going to offend. I got, most people in my church are, are, are 
ethnic, ethnically, is that right, ethnically? Say that three times fast and you're anointed. Are ethnically different than I am. Are uh, sexually, di- in other words, most of the people in my church are female and of a different culture. So almost everything I say can offend somebody here. <laughs> Amen? Amen? If you're not spiritual. So I'm going to say something that might offend some people in some churches, but this isn't some churches. This is a very mature church. So I have the liberty to preach much more meat than anywhere I've ever pastored. Women by nature are nesters. They build their nest. They don't want that sucker moved. They want to raise happy little eggs, watch them spread their wings and fly, and they want to die right there in that same nest. It's very hard to get a Sarah to say, I'll follow you, Lord. Transfer that to the body of Christ with the mentality of the bride of Christ. Most people in the body of Christ, by spiritual nature, are nesters. They don't want change. They don't want to go further. They don't want their, they've got it decorated, fluffed, adorned, comfortable. Don't mess it up. God gave it to me. Did God give it to you? Yes. But this has to say, God, God say, I want you to die there. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And that's the trouble right now is we've nested in prosperity. It's comfortable. It's nice. It's good. We've nested in healing, it's comfortable, it's nice, it's good. We've nested in, in abundance and authority and dominion. And all that's comfortable, nice and good, and it's made your nest good. But it's time to move and fly. Right. Hallelujah. It was to propel you to fly. It, listen, say rapture. rapture. It was to prepare you to fly. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to God. Noah was preaching to them to prepare them. They could have come in. We forget that, church. He was preaching for pre-adventure that somebody would believe, repent, and come in. It wasn't a one-way door. It was open on the ark for whosoever will. But the bottom line is only eight souls escaped. That wasn't determined by Noah. We've got a church here, we're preaching here, we're proclaiming the light, we're showing the ark, but we can't control who will say, yea, Lord, walk up that ramp and come into the ark. But you've got to build and preach, build and preach, build and preach, and never get tired. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. They're nesters. No, we, we don't want to go. We don't want to leave. Remember Lot's wife, a nester trying to deliver her out of destruction, and all she could do is this. Because she had built a nice little home in the middle of hell. And not having eyes for the time, able to see greater things, her looking over her shoulder for her nest caused her her life. See, la body of Christ. There's a reason our Lord pointed these two examples out to us because they're end time now stories. Put in holy writ that we might be warned and adapt and change if need be. Amen. Right now we should be saying, Yea, Lord, speak and I will hear, speak and I will obey, lead and I will follow. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. Boy, that's good. I hope they hear, Holy Ghost. Until the day that Noah entered the ark, until the day of the rapture, most people won't listen. Most people are not going to respond. But the door to the ark was never locked. God chose when the hand of God came down, and it says, and God closed the door. Amen? Amen. But who was right standing there working and doing his diligence until the supernatural closing of the door? Noah. So what are we called to do? Work until, well, I guess we're done. That's when you know you're done. That's when it's okay to drop your guard. That's when it's okay to go, I can rest. Until that day comes, Noah was working. They were mocking. Noah was preaching. They were denying. Noah was diligent. They were nesting. Amen. 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, Jesus said that because it absolutely is the atmosphere, the pattern, the, 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 the prototype of what you are living right here in the right now with destruction coming on the earth and the re Christ rejectors and our day of great redemption and joy draws nigh. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, they just won't listen to me. Did they listen to Noah? But it didn't slow him down a bit, didn't halt, halt him up a bit, didn't distract him one bit. Do you think, other than eight people, Noah might have had friends? Do you think out of eight people, Noah might have known others that his heart cared about? But did it change God's agenda for his purpose in life? Not one bit. Hallelujah. Remember the Holy Ghost talking about spinning place God didn't hand us? Mm -hmm. Noah didn't do nothing God didn't hand him to do. And nobody he cared about and nobody he associated with distracted him from that until pew, God closed the door. Selah Church. Amen. Listen to that ministers. Too many ministers are getting uh, distracted with things that are not the time. Hallelujah, because somebody raised me, and this is my nest. Yes, but the nest was meant for you to fly from here now. Amen? Hallelujah. Now watch this. This, this, this uh, goes on very, very powerful revelation here. And knew not until the flood came and took them away, so, so shall also the coming of the Son of of man. So shall the also the coming of the Son of Man be. It's going to be just like that, saith the Lord. Not T.C. Hudgens. So everything that's going on right now is just a reflection of exactly how they were here. Amen. 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 But what we need to look at is what? The people and the world? No, we need to look at Noah as our example. Amen. He had a purpose, he had a call. He had a work to do. And only eight people stuck with him. Well, look at your church. It's small. Well, consider the days of Noah. I can't tell you what God calls a church, but I can tell you what is out there isn't going to get on the ark. You didn't hear that. It's going to be straight and narrow and few go thereby. Wide and crooked, many will go by. And it leads to what? Destruction. Destruction. So I'm not a fool. I'm not comparing myself to other ministers. I'm not comparing my church to other churches. I'm just telling you, it will be like Noah. And most people won't get on board. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But what we're, what are, we have a Noah work now, right? Right. Prepare the ark. Get them in Jesus. Get them saved. That's what that means, folks. Jesus is the door. I am the door. I am the way. I am the truth. I am the life. No man enters in and sees the Father except through this ark. And that's what we're supposed to be working for. That's what we're supposed to be building. That's what we're supposed to be preaching. Clear up until we fly. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Consider Noah. This is my example right now. Th that's our ministry. Consider Lot's wife. That's what we don't want to do. This is, now this also points out to both the generations. But we've been looking too much on the sodomites and the homosexuals and the this and the that more than looking at Sodom's wife, or not Sodom's wife, uh, Lot's wife and Abraham's or <laughs> Boy, come on, Holy Ghost, help me. And Noah's work. Noah, yeah, they're just caught up in world affairs. We've been preaching that. But now God's saying, today I want you to look at the two people. Lot's wife and Noah's work. That's your work. That's what you don't want to be like. Being a nester will keep you from the work. Being one to stay with your camp will keep you out of the work. 
Not wanting to leave where you were raised will keep you out of the work. Not leaving tradition will keep you out of work. And ultimately, it will kill you right where you're at. Longing for your world not to change will cause you to freeze up and die. Let me say that again. Longing to get back to normal. For your world not to change. And not to have to change and relocate with that change will freeze you up spiritually and cause you to die. That's good stuff. Glory be to God. So right now, there's, how many of you know that between now and the rapture, everything's going to change? Amen. Now, you'll either change flowing with the Holy Ghost and getting in the end time, last minute work of God, or, you, or you'll refuse to change and your world's going to change by being turned upside down. Didn't Jesus say, he that seeks to save it shall lose it? Amen. Your life, your lifestyle, your, li your life's design, your pattern, your little nest, you're going to lose it. Why? Because nests are built where? In trees. And everything that can be shaken will be shaken so that only that which is God remains. Glory to God. Are you getting this? So, so look at somebody says it's time to change. Either to the next level of glory. Or stay where you're at and it's going to change for sure. And it won't be for good. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Then shall two be in the field. One shall be taken. See, the, the, listen to what he's saying. This is a time where things are going to be taken out. We're going to be taken out for our great blessed assurance, our reward. Other people will be taken out. Listen, I'm going to tell you something prophetically. The Holy Spirit's been trying to warn this in us uh, for many years, and you've watched it slowly work out. Everything God said through Pastor T.C. is coming to pass. Every single thing. If, if, if you won't be shaken to move with God, I guarantee you before you finally obey moving with God, God's going to shake people out of your life. I promise you that. I promise you that. He'll, he'll remove every obstacle so that if you refuse to move, it's on you, not on anything to excuse you. Listen closely. I didn't say God doesn't love them. I didn't say they're, they're not dear to you. Noah had friends. Hallelujah. Where do you think his daughter-in-laws came from? He, he, he had a social network. It even implies if you study out his life, he was well known and respected in the community. Same thing with Lot in Sodom. He was well known and respected in the community. If he wasn't known, how would they know where to go to get the virgins? They knew where he lived. They knew his lifestyle. They knew his pattern. He was very known. And he left it all and walked out with Christ. Hallelujah. Even your, even your social standing and your social respect has to be willing to be walked away from. Amen. Glory be to God. Amen. Two women will be grinding at the mill. One shall be taken, one shall, the other will be left. Watch ye therefore, for you know not what hour. It didn't say season. Listen, listen get off that. Well, nobody knows. He did, he's never said hour and date, but he's always preached season, 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 season. I know when a woman's nine months pregnant because she's bigger than two months pregnant. The travail birth pangs are much more increased than they were at six months. I'm not worried about the day and hour. I'm worried about am I in season? Am I out of season? Am I out of step? Am I in agreement with the direction and the enlarging and the growing of what God's wanting us to do in this last hour? Hallelujah. Watch therefore, for you know what hour your Lord cometh. But I do know when the woman's pregnant. Say she's greatly pregnant now. The birth pangs are almost nonstop now. Every week a new pang comes on the earth. It's a, the, 
the child's about to be born. The church is about to be caught up. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Amen. I don't know the day or the hour, but I sure know we're in the last days. This, pa this baby's coming soon. And very soon. Like the song, soon and very soon. We are going to the Lord soon and very soon. Amen? Amen. We should be singing that all the time. Amen. Well, better than I sing it, but you should be singing it. Amen? But know this, that if the, here's the point. Here, here it is right here. Well, I don't know the day or hour. Well, that's stupid to keep repeating that, self to, that to yourself. Look at what he says at the next part. It's a warning to that mentality. But know this, know this. Stop being dazed, confused, and out of the loop. Stop being stupid on purpose, willfully ignorant. Know this, that if the good man of the house had known in what watch the thief would come. Now, he's not saying Jesus is a thief, but he's doing what? Teaching by parable. Because people are nesters, they don't want nobody taking nothing. They don't want to be forced out. So Jesus is using the analogy of a thief. He said in another place, he comes like a thief in the night. Jesus is going to steal away his bride out of the world that thinks they've got control over her. Amen. Amen? Know this, that if the good man in the house had known in what watch the thief would have come, he would have watched and would have not allowed his house to be broken into. Verse 44. Therefore, be ye also dazed, confused, and stupid. What? Ready. How should we live right now? Building, preaching, and ready. It, therefore, be you, church, you brothers and sisters, you Christians, you be ready. For in such an hour as you would think not, the Son of Man cometh. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The last thing you want to do is find your mouth said, nobody knows, and I've heard that my whole life. That's the last stuff you want entering into your heart. You want to preach. You want to work, you want to build the church, you want to be an ambassador, and you want to be watching and praying, watching and praying, watching and praying. Amen. Amen. Glory be to God. Who then is a fit? Now here we go, watch this, because the title of this message is going to be, Do You Love Me? And then we'll probably finish it next week. Who then is a faithful and wise, oh, underline wise, because Noah's generation, Lot's generation, were what? You've been politically correct. Fools. If you've been warned and you don't take a warning, you're a fool. There's no reason for you to die. There's no reason for you to die all over the world. You, you would rather mock than be wise and come out of your foolishness. Well, everybody else thinks I'm funny. Everybody else is going to die with you. Well, good, I get to go to hell with my friends. I had a guy say that to me one time. Now, listen, he's standing, he's standing there mocking me, and I'm preaching to him on the streets, and they're smoking crack and smoking cigarettes. And I, and I looked at his friend. I said, let me borrow your lighter. He goes, what for? I said, just let me have your lighter. And he hands me his lighter, and I grabbed this guy's arm, put it under my arm real quick, and I lit, flicked that bick, and I held it under his head. And he started screaming, what are you doing? What are you doing? I said, well, dude, no problem. I let that fire lick his palm real good. I could have gone to jail for that, but it was a great teaching moment. And everybody's standing there like, this guy's gone crazy. And I said, well, no, 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 no. No big deal. What do you mean no big deal? You could have blistered my hand. I said, what are you worried about? You said, let me go to hell with my friends. Hell's an everlasting fire. Now, were you thinking about your buddy over here? No. Were you thinking about him over there? No. Were you thinking about him over there? No. What were you thinking of? Getting your hand out of the fire. That's all you'll live in eternity doing. You don't give a rip about your friends being there with you. Amen. Get me out of this torment will be the quote that you speak and cry and scream forever. And you think it's funny now. Come on. 
go to hell with your friends. You could care less about your friends. All you want to do is escape. I'm warning you so you can escape now. And if you don't heed that warning, you're nothing but a fool. Somebody say hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, we think we're so wise and cute before God. Who then is a faithful and wise servant? There's the key word, underline it right now. I want to be a wise servant. How about you? I want to be found faithful. How about you? I want to be found faithful. I didn't say perfect. I didn't say without flaws. You know, I have this vision of TC when I'm in heaven. And <laughs> it's kind of self-serving, but, but just hear me out. And I, I have this vision of Jesus, call, Jesus and the Holy Ghost calling uh, a whole bunch of brothers and sisters over to him and saying, see that guy over there under that tree crying and praising and lifting his hands? Yeah. He holds a record of the entire universe. He is number one at getting up and starting again. I may not be able to have any other gold crown, but I want to be found faithful. Not perfect, not without my history, not without my flaws, but I want to be that guy sitting under the tree that by the grace of God, I was the best getter-upper and starting again that ever lived. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to God. A wise. I want to be wise and I want to be faithful. Wise is discerning. Why would he use wise after all this? Because the wise man discerns that, so he acts just like that and learns from it. Come on. Faithful is now, now that I've learned, I get back about my father's business, come out from being like them, and get to building and preaching and living for him again. Amen. Watching and praying and being ready. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Who then is a wise and faithful servant, whom the Lord has made ruler over his household to give them meat in due season? Now here's the verse. Are you ready? Blessed is that servant whom his Lord, when he cometh, shall find doing. Not sitting and hoping, doing. The wise servant found doing. The faithful woman of God doing. Hallelujah. What was Noah when the ark door was closed? He was doing. What was Lot? He was doing. He was marching and obeying and being led out. Amen. Faithful and wise servant found by the Lord doing. Can I hear an amen? amen? Hallelujah to the Lamb. Let's close there and we'll pick up next week with, no, well, we won't. Next week is a healing Sunday. We'll pick up after that with part two of Do You Love Me? Amen? Give the Lord a big hand clap. And remember, Jesus is Lord and God loves Garland. Amen, amen, amen.